All right, thank you, Nathan. Well, Arkansas saw its biggest one day increase in COVID-19 cases today. 878 new cases of coronavirus reported, more than double yesterday's number. And only 150 of those cases are in state prisons. That means community spread is at an all time high. But that wasn't the only big news from the state today. Concerns about the coronavirus are officially a valid excuse to vote absentee in the upcoming 2020 election. It's an effort to reduce the number of people packing polling sites in November. But there are many questions about how this process is going to work. THV 11's Ashley Godwin spoke to the Pulaski County Clerk about one big question. Who's footing the bill? We have 200, over 250,000 registered uh, voters. And if the trend goes as what we're seeing, we could get approximately 40,000 plus absentee uh, ballot applications. Arkansans can request an absentee ballot during this election year if they have concerns about the coronavirus. Voters can request an absentee ballot application from their county clerk through the mail, or it can be downloaded through the Secretary of State's website. Once the application is returned, a ballot will be mailed to the voter on the county's dime. In Pulaski County, there was only enough money budgeted for 9,000 absentee ballots, and that's not including application costs. Now, if we mailed out an absentee ballot application to everybody in Pulaski County, every registered voter, that would be $125,000. That's just the application. Mailing out a ballot to everybody is $2.50 per person. So our concern is through the CARES Act or even maybe emergency funding from the state, will they reimburse us for those particular costs? As a county clerk, you can't deny them, you know, the option to have a mail, a mailed ballot to them. So what happens when, let's say, you know, you start seeing more than those 9,000 that you have budgeted for? If they uh, certainly have been concerned about COVID, which we most of us do, then they should start asking for that absentee ballot application now. We need that funding for postage, for printing, and that kind of thing, because we want to make sure that everybody can vote safely and freely, and that's our concern. Reporting for THV 11, I'm Ashley Godwin. Some more details on the absentee process. You obviously must be a registered voter. October 5th is the deadline to register for the November election. You have to submit your application to get one of these absentee ballots by October 27th. You can early vote as an absentee, and on Election Day, ballots must be in by 730, which is when the in-person polls close. If you want to take a closer look at today's announcement, just text the word VOTE to 501-376-1111, and we'll send you information on how to make sure your voice is heard. New tonight, police have made an arrest in the death of a 17-year-old who was found dead inside a car on a Sherwood walking trail last week. Police served a capital murder warrant for Tyrone Miller today. He was taken into custody without incident, and he's being held at the Pulaski County Regional Jail awaiting his arraignment. Many conversations at safe social gatherings this holiday will center around what our kids and grandkids will do this fall. THV 11's Roly Hoyt has some more on some important decisions already being made at Lake Hamilton for both graduating seniors and returning students. Recent decisions by district leaders here typifies what education is going to look like in the near future. Graduation will be in person but outside and a virtual academy will be online. I guess we're proud to be able to offer this to students and their families who needed this culminating experience. So Lake Hamilton seniors will get the chance to get diplomas and hear speeches in a place that already has distance markers laid out. The graduates will be spaced on the field. They won't be able to sit as a tight knit group, but they'll be spaced. We have all the spacing requirements, all the facial covering requirements. The plan is to gather August 1st. They can't go inside if it rains. It will be quick because it will be hot. Once they wave goodbye, next comes figuring out teaching students amid a pandemic that has many parents worried. Some are not ready to send their students back yet. For them, Lake Hamilton is starting a virtual academy as an option. Students in the virtual academy will follow our same curriculum for students who are on site. It will be Lake Hamilton teachers. They will interact live on a regular basis with Lake Hamilton teachers. 
The crash course we all got in online teaching is not new. A handful of virtual schools exist in Arkansas. Pulaski County started one last year before the virus even cropped up. Leaders stress it's one option available during the pandemic. Lake Hamilton is going to be offering on-site instruction, and we are looking forward to being able to welcome back our students to campus. Evidence is mounting the kids will be safe in school, but the virus has been tricky. Students need face-to-face -face for um, learning new skills, but we'll, we'll meet those challenges as we need to. In Piercy, Roley Hoyt, THV 11 News. President Trump is reversing his stance on wearing masks in public as the U.S. hit a new record for new coronavirus cases on a single day. The president is facing criticism from Democrats and some members of his own party for politicizing the idea. I'm all for masks. I think masks are good. I would wear, if I were in a group of people and I was close. President Trump plans to travel to Mount Rushmore tomorrow for an Independence Day celebration where attendees will not be required to wear masks. Texas Governor Greg Abbott issued an order today requiring face masks be worn in counties with 20 or more COVID-19 cases. The order does not apply to anyone under the age of 10 or people with health conditions that prevent them from wearing a mask. Violators could face up to $250 in fines. An Arkansas state senator and his family are issuing a warning tonight after a fireworks show ended in disaster. Second District Senator Jim Hendren of Gravit celebrated the holiday with their church last night when fireworks they thought were spent reignited in the bed of his truck, engulfing it in flames. Hendren said they had poured water on the fireworks, but you can never be too careful. Professional fireworks shows are probably the safest for everybody. Without the first responders and the incredible response by our fire departments and our Benton County Sheriff's Office, our house would be gone. Hendred says, or Hendren says the carport took some damage, but everything else was okay. Thankfully, no one was hurt. And with fireworks canceled around the country because of the pandemic, many people are planning to put on their own shows at home. But tonight, a first of its kind study highlights the dangers of inhaling fireworks smoke. CBS's Naomi Ruckham reports. Fireworks are bright and beautiful. They get their vibrant colors from metals. Now researchers at NYU Grossman School of Medicine have found fireworks sold to consumers can release toxic metals into the air. I was surprised they were such high levels. Lead study author Dr. Terry Gordon says his son Christopher came up with the idea to study the toxicity of fireworks particles for a high school science project. They collected airborne particles emitted from about a dozen different types of fireworks and tested them on human cells in the lab. We found high levels of lead in one of the 12 samples and a common metal we found was copper at high levels. We also found strontium, barium and titanium and aluminum. Researchers also analyzed air quality samples taken over 14 years and found toxic metal levels were higher around the 4th of July and New Year's Eve. Popular times for fireworks. Nobody considers the, the metals that, in the particles that we're going to breathe. And it's mostly for the consumer fireworks are mostly for young children. So one has to be aware that one should not assume that these are safe just because a manufacturer sells them. And obviously, I feel that the manufacturers should up their game, so to speak, at testing fireworks. Dr. Gordon says while more study is needed, he plans to share his findings with health officials, fireworks manufacturers, and regulatory agencies. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. And remember, fireworks are illegal within Little Rock City limits. If you hear or see fireworks in your neighborhood, police ask that you do not call 911 because that clogs up the line for emergencies. Instead, the LRPD has set up an email address to make fireworks complaints. You can find it on THV11.com.